If you've ever read a Dr. Seuss book, no, hang on, let's not go there. If you have ever had to just figure stuff out as you go, hit that subscribe button. Hey, on today's video, we're going to dive into short trips versus long trips. So I've actually had a few conversations now over with family and then uh, subscribers, Instagram, emails on, you know, hey, how many trips, how many trips do you have to do a week? Like, would I be able to do three or four of those where we're going to, we're going to dive into the differences. You know, what should you be looking for to get the best out of your uh, RV transport situation? Here we go. Okay. So short trips, long trips, what are the pros and cons? What do you need to know? I am on a short trip right now. Uh, what is the most advantageous thing for that? It's that I'm going to be home later today after I drop. Uh, if I do a trip that, even if I plan it to cross my home state, drop on a longer trip, you know, it makes for a shorter route back home, I'm still going to take a day to get back, essentially. So, short trips, you're not too far from home. Uh, now, if you live west of Indiana and you go east, it's a short trip, you still got to go all the way back, but... Nevertheless, I think the best thing is just your home sooner rather than later. Now, what is the flip side of that? Well, this was a 600 mile trip, um, five something. And compared to an 11 to 1500 mile trip, you know, the pay is kind of, I don't know, we'll say laughable. Uh, when you're used to doing trips that are over a thousand miles and you know really there's probably short trips intermediate trips long trips but we'll say short and long when you're looking at how many trips do i need to do throughout the week and again i i was talking with it was actually my nephew he's like well can i do three of those a week uh i'm like no you you wouldn't want to we we're talking about my typical like 1100 ish mile trips that I like to do and what the pay is and yada yada and then I had another person ask in an email again I, I mentioned this about you know, I heard a guy say you have to do so many trips a week and you know such and such you don't have to do so many trips a week when you can do that in one trip so if you're choosing a longer trip so what are the benefits to a long trip it's one camper or one haul one pick one drop you're done uh you know and you get into the minor details you know it's one pull fee it's one calm data fee you know like your itemized expenses when you get that final settlement email it's one of them well somebody over here that's doing three trips, which from a gross pay standpoint, you know, would equal the same amount as that one trip over here. Well, they've got three pull fees. They've got three calm data fees and any other line items that maybe your company has. So then when you look at a percentage of profitability, so like what's the margin, this is more profitable than three, even though the gross pay could be identical say if it was you know three five hundred mile trips versus one fifteen hundred mile trip this is more profitable the only kicker to that is your fuel economy so you know if you chose a destination that has horrible terrain or horror you're going through wyoming and it's just as windy as it could be um, or you have one of those campers uh, where I think uh, High Mileage Helper did a video on it, and maybe even Fair Winds and Following Seas, where it's just a giant wall behind you and it just destroys your fuel economy. You know, those would be things that you factor in. When I had multiple people ask about how many trips do I need to do in a week, or could I do three or four of those in a week when we're talking, you know, a thousand mile trip or a 1500 mile trip, it's like, why don't we just look at 
what your total uh, revenue is, what you need to hit for the end of the month when it comes around and all your bills cycle through, uh, those bills including your truck payment, your unladen insurance. So when you look at it from a holistic standpoint, it's, oh, I need X amount of dollars. Well, do I want to accumulate that money in, we'll say 15 trips? Or would I rather do three trips and then I'm good for the month? I don't know about you, but I would rather do three trips and be done opposed to loading and unloading, loading and unloading over and over and over uh, to get the same gross pay, but actually be at a slight deficit in terms of what you put in your pocket, that take home pay. So are short trips worth it? They are about as useful as a pine cone in the woods if you know what I mean. Sure, they serve a purpose, but I am not a proponent of them. Uh, the reason I am on this trip right now is because I had several organically generated um, jobs for the dumpster rental side of things, and I needed to be back home to go pick up the dumpster on Sunday, so tomorrow or Monday at the latest. So I turned down an 1100, like my go-to trips, I turned it down because I wouldn't have been able to have been back until late Monday, uh, maybe early Tuesday if things just didn't go as planned. So if you ever have this notion, this question of, you know, hey, can I do five trips in a week? Stop for a second, breathe, maybe do one of these. And then ask yourself, how much money do I need to make in the week? Is there one trip that could take care of that? Because your expenses are going to be less uh, from an itemized standpoint. Uh, again, fuel is going to be a variable expense based off of, you know, that trip, the terrain, the, you know, mother nature and what have you. So hopefully this video just maybe sheds a little bit of light on those short trips versus long trips. And one of the things that is worth noting is let's say that you have a short trip and like as I'm in the haul and tow division now, I'll look at central dispatch and just look at, um, you know, what destination, where am I at? Where am I trying to get yada, yada. And you may see something that pays an extra however much per mile. Again, though, if it's a shorter trip and then you look at it, you're like, but I need this much money at the end of the month to make my numbers work how I want them to work for me to be successful. Yeah, that short little 100 mile trip that paid, we'll say a dollar a mile, gave you $100. There, and, and maybe you still had some deadheading to go. Uh, but then there was a 500 mile trip that paid 75 cents. Again, look at the total revenue that you need, not just basing off rate per mile or this or that, um, but what do you need out of your hauls to give you what you want? Hey, if this video was helpful, uh, if you find any value in it, go ahead, hit that subscribe button like the video. Maybe there's a Facebook group you could share it to if it was super helpful. Uh, if not, go ahead, hit that dislike button. That's fine too. Uh, you're still helping me regardless. But anyways, um, again, hey, if you're out there on the road, stay safe. Uh, look at the hauls that are on your load board um, as ways to help you get that financial situation that you need at the end of the month to be where you wanna to be, to be successful, um, to not just pay the bills, but to make sure that you're setting money aside for when issues come up, uh, you know, for that down payment that you're going to be making on a house in the future, you know, whatever it may be. But don't always think of it in terms of, I need, well, if I do five trips in a week, look at it from a revenue standpoint. You know, maybe there's a short trip that takes you to a place you've never been before. And so you're cool 
with taking that short trip because it's going to allow you to uh, just indulge in some of the benefits, you know, some of the kickbacks of RV transport when it comes to just being able to tour around, see the country. But don't let the small trips, the number of trips, the locations get you distracted from the reason why you're in this. And I would assume you're in this to make some money. So make the numbers work. Longer trips, less stressful, less time out of the driver's seat, uh, less itemized expenses, more profitability. And you know what? Sometimes you gotta tell a dispatcher no. They may want you to go on this short little trip or this or that. Again, yeah, you know, help people, they'll help you, this, that. Uh, I just be a little cautious on that because sometimes it's more of, hey, help me, help me. I'll get you on the next one, but there isn't really any um, kickback to it, at least from what I've noticed from my journey in doing this. So just make sure that you're taking care of your numbers. You're getting what you need out of it uh, because at the end of the day, if units are being moved, everybody's making money. Uh, regardless of if you're doing short ones, long ones, whatever, uh, the company's happy. Make sure that your numbers fit for what you need. Hey, that's it. I'm out. Uh, be on the lookout for some cool new content headed your way.